Uh, Start pouring now, honey. Uh, uh, grab a bottle, grab a glass. Where's the action movie? Or... Oh, uh, no. The Lion King, one of the most popular and successful movies from Disney. It has wonderful characters, a beautiful story, and amazing animation. Plus, it made lots and lots of money. So it's no surprise that such a level of success would inspire some ripoffs. But there's a clone that is so bizarre, so outrageous, that it truly boggles the mind. I present to you all Simba King Lion, a show that features the following. Lasers, superpowers, alcohol, mouth kisses, dinosaurs, flamethrowers, the great Deku tree, orgy dance parties, pedophilia, death by electrocution, drug hallucinations, and torture. Oh, uh, but they also have soccer, you know, <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> And the best part? This show was animated and directed by North Koreans, the same ones who made Squirrel and Hedgehog. <laughs> Guys, strap in. We're in for a wild ride. I'll give it a try. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> So before we start, I want to mention that this video topic was recommended to me by Julius, one of my top tier sponsors on Patreon. Part of his reward tier is suggesting an idea for a review, and it just so happened to be one that I was planning on doing. I accept your very handsome offer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You'll be even more unbearable. Okay, so like I said, this cartoon is a ripoff of The Lion King. It came out in 1996, two years after the movie was released. But my god, this show could not be further away from the original source material. It's like a fanfic from DeviantArt, and uh, that's not an exaggeration. Oh no, your character has their back up against the wall. Well, don't worry, they just discovered that they have superpowers, and they will have no problem winning now. You're beginning to truly know yourself, Simba, and the powers the Big Dipper has given you. And one of those is the power to see through time. As I said, this show was animated in North Korea, but it was also a joint effort with the Italians from Mondo TV. Actually, to be honest, the Italians are more responsible for the nonsensical craziness of the show, since they're the ones who wrote it. Also, that explains why there's so much soccer. Like, seriously, you cannot escape it. But you can absolutely see North Korean influence from the director, Kim jun ok This guy has such an impressive resume. He directed Pocahontas, Princess of the American Indians. He directed The Legend of Sleeping Beauty. I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. I know you, the people are the soul for me. And guys, he directed both of those crappy animated Titanic films, The Legend of the Titanic and In Search of the Titanic. Yo, 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 look at my teeth. They're so sharp and white and neat. They bring on fear and heal some terror. Once they should, I make no error. I truly have no idea what the hell is going on in these films. I might have to review these in the future. They're just so freaking bad and crazy. Maybe this is a joke. No. I don't think so. But funny enough, after reviewing Squirrel and Hedgehog, I started to notice some trademark animation styles from the North Korean studio. It has something to do with the angry eyes and teeth of their anthropomorphic characters. Are you tired of living? Say another word and I'll slit your throat. Nah, 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 nah. Don't make me laugh. See this? I'll knock your teeth out. All right, so let's go over the show and what it's about, which is, uh, 
gonna be kind of hard because it's about everything. So this is the first series and is the one that's most similar to The Lion King. But that's not really saying much. Outside of being named Simba and having a dead father, there's very little in common between the two. And within the first few episodes, things just go right off the track. We learn that Simba and Bambi, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Bimbo are the best of friends. We also learn that Baloo the bear is one of their guardians and protects them from the evil tiger Shere Khan. You have news? Master, I don't know what's happening, but the monkeys and I saw one of the lion cubs and that little deer walking across the river. I'm afraid yeah. it might be the spirit of the Lion King don't come back to- Don't be silly. <laughs> if you're joking. <laughs> 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 I'll turn you into stew! Be gone, fuck! We got ourselves a Lion King Bambi Jungle Book crossover. Just take enough Disney movies, throw them in a pot, and look at that. You got yourself a TV show. You know that's impossible. No animal can walk on water, idiot! Deja vu. I just so the story goes that Simba's dad dies, and that the jungle friends must raise Simba to be the future king. Oh, and by the way, I love how they tell Simba how his father was killed. You see, Simba was napping when his dad died, so the jungle animals go to find him to tell him the news. But it turns out, oh no, Simba's napping on a human trap. They rescue him, and then they have a laugh about the situation. And then they tell him that his dad is dead. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Simba. <laughs> oh, by the way, your dad's dead. <laughs> you are very lucky. Without Bagheera, you'd be gone. Like your father. What do you mean? He's gone? <laughs> My father's gone? But don't worry, Simba is a smart kid. So smart that he decides to have a staring contest with the sun. You know what we should do? Lie down in the grass and stare at the sun. All right, sounds neat. Why? Well, duh, he wants to attain its knowledge. Mr. Sun, tell me why you're so hot. I want to know. You will never know the secret behind my power. My heat and strength will destroy you if you are not careful. But who needs knowledge when you have magical powers? Seriously, just shoot a laser and you're good to go. By the way, folks, this is all happening within the first few episodes of the series, which is 50 episodes long. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch all of them, but the parts I did see were something else. I especially like the episode where Simba grows up and his inner voice straight up talks to him. Oh, and it grants him the power to see through time. You must free your mind and let this power guide your thoughts. Trust yourself, Simba, and one of those is the power to see through time. So because of this power, we learn that Shere Khan was the one who set up Mufasa's death. As in, the tiger spoke to the human hunters and told them to kill Simba's dad. Just let that sink in for a bit. Also, Shere Khan kills Simba's mom, and then they straight up rip off the lamb before time. Simba. Mama's not feeling so well, sweetheart. I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you and the others. Hey man, can I copy your homework? Huh? Uh, can I copy your homework? No, you can't copy my homework! No. There is no, 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 no. So you think that's as bad as it gets. Superpowers, dance parties, and murder. But guys, I don't know how, but it gets even crazier. The second series is called Simba Jr. to the World Cup. Yeah. So what happens is one of the animal friends gets kidnapped and taken away to New York City. Naturally, all the good characters teleport there through the orifice of the Great Deku Tree, a party of creatures that includes a lion, a deer, a snake, a bear, a canary, an owl, a crow, two mice, a cheetah, and a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> 
they go into the sewers of New York and get into a gang war with a bunch of rats. Rats who have flamethrowers and tanks and rollerblades. <laughs> I mean, how do you fight that? Well, duh. With magical powers and a cat that can perform astral projection. <laughs> So the parents get captured, and the children of the main animals go to the rescue, and then they find their lost dog friend, who was absolutely fine. Actually, he's doing fantastic, because he's a coach for a soccer team for the Animal World Cup. That's no way to play! So yeah, we went from this to this, and you would think that things couldn't possibly get any crazier. But guys, I don't know how, but they actually do. I present to you the final series, Winner and the Golden Child. In the last episode of the World Cup series, Simba's daughter Light has a vision of another world. A world full of dinosaurs and monkey men and power rangers and frog people and freaking rock monsters that look like fecal matter. People of the land of dinosaurs, our ancient prediction has been fulfilled. Finally, our king has arrived. And to top it all off, all of this stuff came right after Light, Simba's child daughter, admits to having feelings for a dog named Fox who is an adult. An adult who feels the same way. Huh? Light. Are you still the light of my eyes? Why don't you take a seat right over there? Uh, you mean me? Obviously, Light's mother is not happy about this. But not because the dog is an adult, but because the fact that he's not a lion. To which Light then promptly calls her mother a racist. You're a lion. He's a dog. He loves me as much as I love him. Sweetheart, an eagle can't fall in love with a sparrow. It's love that counts, not retractable claws. I never thought I'd hear my own family spout racism. So the third series is about a prophet child from another world. A child who has insane superpowers and will defeat the evil forces of the bad witch. But the child is young and must be raised by Simba and his friends. According to the prophecy, Ari will be our savior. He will overcome the forces of evil and bring peace to our land. Okay. At this point, I'm at a loss for words. I truly have no idea what is happening. From what I understand, this show is a combination of Simba King Lion and the legend of Snow White. Which makes me wonder, what the hell happened in Snow White? Why are there Power Rangers? And here's the best part. At the end, Shere Khan returns out of nowhere and works together with the witch. And how do they settle their war with the forces of good? <laughs> Come on, you should know by now. With a soccer match. No! So we went from a Disney movie crossover, to fighting rats in the sewers of New York, to playing in the World Cup, and then getting involved with raising a prophet child, who was the center of conflict in the great dinosaur war that was being waged by the evil witch from Snow White. And then they play soccer. <laughs> What. The. Fuck. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my top tier sponsors on Patreon. Toongren, Screenflare, Kaiser, Adam S, Chad Butler, Malkavio, Moondoggy, Illegally Sane, and Julius. Thank you all so much for your support. 
This series is truly something else. I have never seen something so broad and obscure. Again, it feels like it was a fanfic that was created by a bunch of 10 year olds. It has murder, superpowers, and plenty of moments that fall back on Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the different elements of the show. Voice acting. Meh, meh, it's not great. Though I did notice that some of the voice actors from the show are the same ones who worked on Arthur. Like, the voice of Bimbo the deer is the same as Buster the bunny. Shh, we're hunting the dangerous snake. The monkeys, they ambushed me and then they kicked me. Dialogue. They talk over each other all the time. Sentences constantly running into each other to the point where I'm not even sure what they're saying. <gasps> oh, you'll always be oh, with no. us. Your Good sons will be proud. Thing. Goodbye. Oh, Editing. I don't know if this is an editing problem or a writing problem, but the pacing in this show is so bad. There are moments that go on for far too long and should be clipped down. I mean, I don't know, maybe they're trying to stretch things out to meet some kind of episode requirement, but man, does it hurt the flow of the show at times. <laughs> Animation. Honestly, it's not that bad. Nothing groundbreaking, but it's got its moments. Hell, we even get a few rotating shots. Story. Obviously, this is the most glaring aspect of the show, from its blatant plagiarism to its nonsensical plot lines. It's as if somebody consumed a bunch of different intellectual properties, threw it all up into a bucket, and said, hey look, we got ourselves a cartoon with soccer. The show itself isn't very good. I mean, I like it for how crazy it is, but the pacing is just so bad. And there are episodes where nothing happens. Seriously, there's one where they just dance, and that's it. <laughs> but if you are a fan of crazy cartoons with shocking moments, then I would recommend watching this show. It's unlike anything I have ever seen, and definitely shakes up the status quo.